Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Noe Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit and joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. Hello, Pedro. What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, Creative Tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. Woo, that's right. This is showing we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We hope you're staying warm. This is episode uh, 219. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's kick off the show with a special coupon code for today. It is Retro Wing. So if you want to check out anything in the Adafruit shop, this will work on just about everything except for gift certificates or subscriptions, but everything else is fair game. Use the coupon code Retro Wing at checkout to get 10% off your order. Speaking of orders, if you order more things, you get some free bees. Adafruit.com slash free and you'll see we have some new stuff. We are giving away some awesome magazines from Make, from Hackspace, and from Schmore. So check those out, adafruit.com slash free. You can see all the lovely details. Same day delivery is an option. If you are in a hurry and you really need your parts and you live in New York City, you can get your stuff the same day you order it. CircuitPython meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It is a great time to join in and listen into the, the discussion, into the weeds and beyond. Huge shout out to Katni Rambor for heading that one, along with Scott and the rest of the team. Be sure to check it out. It is also posted as an archive later on the YouTube. You can join in live by heading on over to our Discord server. Discord.gg slash Adafruit is the Discord link. Adafruit Daily is our newsletter. It's a daily dose of Adafruit. Uh, it's a good mix of resources, links, um, stories from the community, that sort of stuff. You have to opt into it. There are sorts of categories and things that you have to click on. You gotta do a little bit of work to subscribe to this one. So if you'd like to do so, adafruitdaily.com is the website. Adafruit.com slash newsletter is a once a week uh, product focused newsletter that you can subscribe to. Again, you have to subscribe to it. We don't automatically do that. Discord, we're hanging out in the Discord server right now. It is discord.gg slash Adafruit. So you can check out and the many, many awesome community members that are hanging out there. There are over 10,000 folks that have registered and thank you so much for joining us there. There are several uh, topics and it's been, um, it's been Murray Kondo'd recently if you've looked. There is a nice sidebar here that says, do I have help with 3D printing, Arduino, CircuitPython, or Adafruit IO, help with audio, help with radio, help with Raspberry Pi. It is all broken out, nice and clean on the sidebar. You also have topics of interest, CircuitPython, MakeCode, Classroom. If you're an educator and you're looking for uh, some tips and things like that, or you want to share some tips and things like that, that would be the place to do so. Show and tell, great place to share your projects with the world and the community. And many, many more. So check out all the lovely Scroll um, all the way down so we can show where the CircuitPython meeting happens right there under voice. You can see where it's labeled CircuitPython. Right now we have the recorded one from this week, earlier this week. Mm -hmm. So there, check it out. Lady Ada was guest on there talking about all of the new... All the stuff uh, she's working on. Mm -hmm. Very awesome. All righty. Well, hmm. what are we going to start off with? Oh. Quick shout outs to everybody in the chat rooms over on YouTube. We've got stuff with Kirby hanging out Hello. in there. Matable, Fortnite, Pokemon Kid, Danny C, all the things. And then over on Facebook, we've got Bill Binko hanging out. Hey, Bill. Caleb Craft. Hello, Caleb. In the house. And on Discord, we have Troy Gray, or Gar, all the things. Andy Calloway, also in the YouTube. And of course, Yanni is hanging out as well. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Yeah, 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 we appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, do you ready to start off with this week's project? This Last week we shared a little bit about it. This week it is up and published, so you guys can check it out. This is a miniature Macintosh inspired enclosure. It's a 3D printed enclosure for the awesome Adafruit Halloween M0 Express. So the goal here for the project was to kind of make a simple sort of little desktop toy that can display different boot screens from the various Mac OS um, operating systems, that's what OS stands for. Uh, and and uh, it displays those images on the TFT display and if you would, Pedro, put your finger inside there and tap one of the little capacitive touch pads. Welcome to Circuit 
Python 4.0. You betcha. There you go. So uh, it displays audio sound clips. That's all built into the 8 megabyte flash drive. So let's rewind a little bit. Hello. So what you can do with this project is you can create your own custom assets and quickly display images and sound effects. The speaker is mounted to the back here with this little um, little hinge door that prints in place. And it's a snap fit cover, so it comes off like that. There are no screws necessary to fasten this and secure this. This is the Halloween. Um, it has so many things on board. It has an accelerometer. It has capacitive touch. It has 8 megabyte flash, built-in amplifier. This thing has too much. I didn't even mention that it has a 100 by 128, 128 by 128 pixel uh, TFT display that's going to be about 1.44 inches this way, that's diagonal, um, which can play uh, display some pretty decent images. And you can see here, that's the Circuit Python 4.0, um, I don't know what you call poster. it, banner, poster. <coughs> poster. Yeah, and it just snap fits in there. You have access to, these. You use to the USB port up there. And uh, there's also a battery there. So you have a built-in LiPo charger. So you can plug this in, reprogram, upload assets on any computer. No need to download the Arduino IDE. It all runs off of, uh, off of CircuitPython. I just like opening and closing. It's a lot of fun. So uh, what we can do is we can play different boot screens. So I'm just going to hold down um, the cap touch and just kind of run through some of these uh, some of these iconic displays, uh, boot screens. So that was, I've never actually seen this one. This is the Apple II GS. That's kind of neat. This is your traditional Mac S7. Yeah, you're going to want to switch that top one to the top one where it says Logitech Brio. Make it um, that last one there, 920. And then advanced right there. And then turn off auto focus. And you can adjust it from there. There we go. We're fixing in, blocking in the audio right now, or the, the there we go. So you can see it's, it, it's got pretty decent uh, resolution. <laughs> 128, 128. This is uh, the Mac OS 8, I believe. Mac OS 9. I remember that one. I love that one. This is the first preview of Mac OS 10. We still have those we discs. Still have those discs. <laughs> Do you remember that? You had to pay for it. And that's more of the Panther type, or maybe it was Jaguar. They had a lot of different cat names. And then here's a fun prank one as a little bomb when you, uh, <laughs> when you would crash System 7. I remember that one as well. Also, there were some ones that, uh, that kind of precede the little Mac SE case. This is the Lisa back in 83. And that's it. Hello, I'm Halloween Mac. Hello, Halloween Mac. So interesting thing is that you can uh, create your own audio clips fairly easy with Mac OS. <laughs> that's kind of fun. Uh, so that's the project kind of as an overview. Let's take a look at the learn guide and kind of run through it real quick. There we go. So head on over to learn.adafruit.com. You can see that the learn guide is up in public. There's a little fun YouTube video to accompany it. So the homepage overview just kind of shows you what are the parts needed for this project. There are just two parts. All you need is the Halloween and a little mini speaker. You don't even need the speaker if you don't want audio, but that's what it is. As far as prerequisite guides go, we do have the Adafruit Halloween M0 Express Guide, just to kind of walk through it and uh, get familiar with all the components and all the different things that it can do. And then uh, CircuitPython, more towards just the libraries, how to install it, how to maintain it, that sort of thing. And then the last guide is the actual uh, code where uh, John Park put together this, uh, this previous project called the Tiny Museum Tour Guide, which is this project here. It's also on the Adafruit Learn system. And it's basically the exact same project with a different skin. How awesome is that? So we'll walk through it all and um, go through it here. So again, everything is in stock, actually. The Halloween is in stock, and so is that little mini speaker. This uh, project is a snap fit together, plug and play. There is no soldering required. Everything just plugs in. It's really nice, very simple and easy. Uh, there's some author notes and some lovely photos that we took with Adabot. Heading on over to the circuit diagram, um, it just shows you that the speaker plugs into the speaker port on the back of the Halloween. Polarity is already set up for you. Also, a little note on powering. You can, of course, use a LiPo battery. I like the 500 milliamp one because it fits perfectly inside the box. 
you can go with a bigger one or you can just power it over USB. That seems to work well. And you also get the LiPo uh, battery charger as well. So if you want to charge your battery, just plug it in through USB. Heading on over to the software part. This is running CircuitPython. So the first part is to get your Halloween with CircuitPython. I believe it ships with the, uh, the, the eyeball animation, the spooky eyeball animation. So you want to um, double tap on the reset button to go into the bootloader mode and then drop in the latest version of CircuitPython. You will need at least CircuitPython 4.0 as it is uh, the version that works with the slideshow library, which is what we're gonna walk through. Moo is a, a Python editor that's free to download, um, developed by Nick Toll, and one of our favorite uh, editors to work with Python. So definitely check that out. Nice little graphic here, download links right there. And there's a little learn guide for installation help, which is always nice and handy. Uh, so this link here, the tiny museum, uh, links you straight over to the software page of John Park's guide, and this will uh, give you that download link. Make sure that you have the proper latest version of uh, CircuitPython 4.0, and here's the embedded code that you can download onto your board. Um, pretty, uh, I'm not a developer, but you can definitely read through it and see what's going on here. There are no code changes necessary as the code is just looking for any WAV file or any bitmap file that have uh, the same name and we'll display it in a uh, alphabetical order. So that works really well. There's some more notes here on um, how, uh, how, what the code's looking for, the .bmp, which is a .bitmap file. Right, currently we only support bitmaps with the slideshow library, uh, but maybe we'll add some more. And as for the audio format, it, it needs to be a wave file format, audio wave format. But all that's listed here in uh, uh, there's also some demo um, assets that you can play around with here. Uh, as far as this project goes, we created our own assets. Um, we found some of the images on the internet and we scaled them down and kind of reworked them so that they're like nice pixels, like pixel pixel accuracy and all that stuff looks really well. So you can download those. I also ripped a bunch of chime sounds from a YouTube video that is listed here and sourced as well as the blog post that has an assortment of boot screens. More more than I thought there were. And then um, here's a quick little note. Uh, when you're, you just wanna make sure that your bitmap has the same file name as your WAV file. So let's say we're saying Mac OS 8. You wanna make sure that your WAV file is also named Mac OS 8. So it's pretty self, uh, pretty simple that way. Uh, heading on over to the 3D printing part of it, there's just two pieces. The little back door is a print in place hinge that's attached to the actual case and the faceplate is a standalone part that can be printed separately. This thing is so awesome that we broke it out and made it into a widget so you guys can apply these to any of your designs and it's scalable. You did a layer by layer on making this that's right. adjustable with uh, user parameters. Yeah, that's right. So if you guys want to check out that tutorial and that model, we have the links for you in the description of this video. Check those out. This is just a quick uh, Sample so cool. part, you can print it on your printer. Uh, I actually recommend printing this before printing the Mac because that mm -hmm. takes about four hours, give or oh, take. Yeah. The hinge will take about a half hour to an hour depending on your slice settings. But uh, you definitely want to test print that first and then dial in your settings. It should be pretty, pretty decent as it has a, a fairly large um, clearance um, between, the, between the interfacing um, faces. <laughs> So uh, check that one out and let me know if it works. Heading back over to the learn guide. If I can get the right page. There's, the, there's that parametric object. There's a link to the video demonstration and a link to the actual download of that. A little breakdown list of all the STL files and their, uh, the little description of what they are. This download file will actually download all of the 3D files and the media assets. So that includes those bitmaps and those WAV files that we were talking about. It also includes the step file in a Fusion 360 archive. So if you want to download it from there, you'll get all the parts, all the files. For slice settings here, it's just a nice little list of all the slice settings. You do want to orient it as is. Um, if you were to place it on your slicer, uh, you should be able to print it with the orientation that's already set up for it, so that's good. 
As far as um, the Halloween 3D model is available to download if you want to make some accurate parts, some snap fit parts, you can use any of our models. We have arcade buttons, we have lots of different feather boards, circuit playgrounds, all that sort of stuff is in our GitHub CAD parts repository. So go check that out. There you go. We're going to run through the assembly real quick. Um, like that. <laughs> I just scrolled through it. Because uh, I'm going to actually do it on the overhead because I think that'd be kind of nice. So the assembly is pretty simple. Um, I think I kind of just showed it. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect all the staff here and really worry about that. So once you disconnect um, the battery and the, the speaker, you're left with just this box. The only things that get mounted to it is the speaker that gets, fat, uh, it gets press fitted over here. The speaker has a little peel sticky part, so it's, it's literally stuck on there, which is nice. Um, and then the battery is just uh, tacked on there with mounting tack. So I can take that out and you can see that there's a little bit of mounting tack. That's the 500 milliamp battery. So that comes out like that. The faceplate here uh, does not need any screws to secure the PCB, which is awesome. Um, getting this right here is, uh, was really nice so that uh, it only shows uh, the viewport. It does not show the bezel, so that's really nice. So to get this out of here, you're going to push this out and then you just kind of slide it out and then that's it. So there are four uh, standoffs here. Two of the standoffs here uh, have a little special geometry, a little cutaway here so that the bezel of the speaker does not get cracked. So that was important to have there. These little nubs here will actually uh, penetrate through, not penetrate, but will go through the little mounting holes on the hollow wing. There are an assortment of hollow, uh, there's two mounting holes up here that are gold plated and then there are two here that are normally meant for a bit of a lanyard clip or something like that. And then you also have two here. So you got plenty of mounting uh, bits. And then uh, the way that this holds it in is there's these two little clips at the bottom here. They have a little bit of a, uh, of a, of a chamfered edge so that they actually hold the PCB down. So when I insert this, I'm actually gonna insert it at an angle. And then this is gonna slide down and then you're going to see that those little clips just barely grab onto the edges of uh, the PCB. And all you have to do is just click that in. And then those little knobs pr uh, kind of press fit through there. And it stays in there. It does not fall out. And uh, it's pretty nice to secure. That's one good way to do uh, a snap fit design where you don't need any screws. Yay for that. Uh, and that's, that's it. There's these little knobs here on the side right here. There's like this... Uh, sort of a V-shaped nub here, and this will catch onto the little protruding nubs that are on the side of this case, right? And there are only two here, and then these two are pretty flat lips. These are lips that protrude out, and they are just straight cut. They do not have any nubs because they just kind of lock in and make sure that uh, they don't, that this, that this doesn't slide. Because without that, those lips, they would just slide out like that. So that's kind of a quick look at the assembly of it. Really, really simple. Everything snap fits, no need for glue, no need for screws. That's my jam right there. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and put this together now. If we have any uh, questions, definitely let me know. The uh, Pico blade connector is a two pin JST connector that's so small that my fingers can barely work with it. But there you go, that plugs in there. This plugs in here. The hollow wing has a built-in slide switch. So you can turn it off like that if you like. Just stuff it in there. Now the bottom, I originally had it so that there was a little extra panel that would snap fit on the bottom. But then you wouldn't be able to access the, uh, the components there, like the little cap touch stuff. So I figured why not leave it open so that you can access it. Hello, I'm a Halloween Mac. Hello, Halloween Mac. Welcome to Circuit Python 4.0. That's really my favorite part. In the audio, um, there's a nice note in John Park's um, guide on how to create these audio files like that. Well, let's go ahead and walk through it real quick. I'm going to switch again and take a look at how to create those audio files super quickly. I'll just rush through it. If you go to the overview, and I think I have it in the tab here, there it is. There is a page called Preparing Visuals and in, in Audio. It literally, on the Mac OS, um, you can open up the terminal and type in a command that says say, and then whatever you want it to say. So that's really cool. So in my version, 
I can say, hello, welcome to 3D Hangouts. Is it? Hello, welcome to 3D Hangouts. Very cool. Um, so you can do that. That's my computer telling me, welcome to 3D Hangouts. And then you can use that code, uh, this one that says the bottom, say welcome uh, dash zero space welcome dot A-I-F-F. -F. And then you can create an audio file that will get saved to your hard drive. And then you can uh, convert that into an audio wave format, which we show you how to convert the images. Let me show you how to convert the audio. Very, very awesome. Huge shout out to John Park for putting um, all that together because I really didn't have to reiterate it because it's already so thorough. Excellent. So there's a quick little tip on how to create um, custom audio speeches. Like I could have my whole script uh, be written out like that. We did try that. <laughs> we did try that. It sounded a little bit weird, but whatever. Uh, you could also change the uh, the uh, the voice the voices themselves mm -hmm. uh, inside male, of the system female. preferences. Yeah, you can do a search for uh, custom voices or just voices. You could change it. Um, yeah, I thought it'd be nice to have a British ver British voice. Uh, for, for the announcement on the circuit, circuit Python. Excellent. Well, there's the project. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know if you guys build it. And uh, a lot of folks seem to want to actually make a real emulator, make this really display System 7. Because mm -hmm. apparently, System 7 is only 200 kilobytes of storage, plenty of room. You got 8 megabytes of flash. I have like 4 megabytes left after. Uh, after having all those assets in there, I forget how many I have, I think like six or seven displays. And, uh, and you could have, each chime could have a little uh, audio description of what the name is and what year it came out, all sorts of stuff. I just wanted to show the, uh, the chimes. So there you go. Cool, this is inspiring Caleb Craft to check out the hinges snap fit uh, cases. He's looking through yeah. your videos for Excellent. those tips. Excellent, I yes. I put in the playlist for all the layer by layers. Thanks. You can see all those in there. Yeah, Last handy. week's was a really good one. Question by uh, K-Town. I want to move some uh, PCB files inside of an eagle. Doing yeah. the, um, Do you want me to show it? Yeah, you can quickly go through that. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go through it real quick. So uh, yeah, I've been, I've been uh, collaborating with K-Town, Kevin Townsend, who works with Adafruit. He does uh, the, um, the hardware design for the Blue Fruit and other uh, boards. And uh, this is sort of something that I stumbled across too, where we're trying to uh, create PCB files inside of Fusion 360, bring them into Eagle, and then kind of push them back and kind of do this update where you move components in the Eagle side, push it over to Eagle, uh, and then uh, kind of build your enclosure with this this ability to push back and forth updates. <clears throat> yeah, this enclosure is really cool. He wants to lathe this. Yeah, he's right? got himself a new lathe, a CNC lathe machine. He wants to uh, uh, turn a, a uh, I believe it's an aluminum canister and create a bit of a uh, bit of a lipo charger where the case is like the ground. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to create a custom PCB that fits perfectly in this little canister. Uh, and we found that when you're creating PCBs, um, to move them, you kind of have to uh, remove uh, joints mm -hmm. uh, that get automatically assigned. So we were in there trying to figure out forever how to make it, because we didn't know why the PCB wouldn't move. So it turns out that there is an automatically generated uh, rigid, gr rigid mm -hmm. uh, joint that you just have to suppress. It's in the joints folder over there. It's like staring us right in the face. <laughs> so you turn that off and then you can apply a new joint. So if you're ever working with components, you want to make sure that uh, you're working with parts and you want to move them. You want to make sure that they're components and then you can assign joints to them so you can move them around. So there you go. The, the video is already on our YouTube channel so you can check it out. And one last thing is if you guys want the 3D model of the Halloween, it is available on the GitHub. So there's a link in the description of this video and other places. So there you go. I've been putting clothes. all the links to all the products, Sweet. all of the guides, Sweet. all the CAD parts, and all of the chat. So definitely check those out. Cool. Within and the star, our folder, the yeah. CAD um, GitHub That's folder right. that can, we got on there. Can start, I think we're over at 100 stars now. So if you head on over to GitHub slash Adafruit slash Adafruit CAD parts, check out all the stars. Thank you. Lovely parts. We'll be adding more. <clears throat> Forks. K Town as well. is uh, going to be adding a bunch as well. Excellent. So definitely start that so you can get notified when new ones are added weekly. Yeah. Yep. Last week was the radio bonnet. 
And then there was sure another cool. question, somebody wondering how easy it would be to add Google Home Assistant or Google Assistant, uh, Google Home Assistant to one of these cases. Uh, yeah, I think it, it would be pretty big... easy. It, you're pretty much just going to uh, scale it up, mm -hmm. and so the Pi Zero components can fit inside there with the speaker and all that. Wow, that's a so good idea. That might be a future project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. They did release a, a 2.0, didn't mm -hmm. they, of the Google Assistant? Yes. Or maybe one of the Echoes because they're really small. No, it's uh, Amazon. Eh. Never mind. I like the other one because it's yeah. all in pieces. The Echo, mm -hmm. you're just going to stick it in there already assembled. <laughs> Alrighty. Shout out to John K, who is in negative 27 degrees in Chicago. Yep. Warm thoughts. Yeah, thanks Headed for your way. Hopefully we can keep you warm. Okay. Let's go to ahead. the next project. Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into last week's project. Yep. We don't Partnership work. with Cartoon Network and um, Microsoft Make Code. We showed off pairs, pairs. Pearl's uh, LED wand form. So there is a circuit playground in the pummel down here. I can open up. Oh. So this is all a paper construction. If you want to jump over to the guide. Show off how we built this. This is, has no 3D printing in it. This is all uh, cardboard and paper construction. Yeah, the goal is for kids and educators to be able to build this with mm -hmm. uh, kind of not junk parts, not trash, but uh, easy to obtain materials. Yeah, so it's pretty much just hot glue and uh, paper towel rolls. Yeah. And of course... Cardstock. This is a cardstock. Craft, crafting hour here. Uh, Circuit so Playground Express is down here at the pommel, and then a 30 uh, pixel mm -hmm. with the alligator clip, so you don't have to do any sort of soldering. We got MakeCode providing the animations and the sound effects in there. You can kind of see the LEDs in there. Yeah, it's it's super bright, bright yeah. But it offers a very nice diffusion uh, having the foam core, which is just like poster board, which yeah. you can find everywhere, like at a dollar store, or even like um, grocery stores have these in the stationary aisle. Super cool. Yeah. Let's go ahead super and sweet. jump through the uh, guide for this. Super easy. Um, Yep. Some so quick the, little explanation, how yeah. you can edit this. Here's the parts for that. Super simple in terms of the build for this. The only complex thing is cutting out all of the templates, which of course we provide. You can get all the SVGs for that. Mm -hmm. You can even use a vinyl cutter to get all those shapes cut out a little bit more faster. That's right. Get a classroom uh, workshop going faster. All the parts are in stock right now, so that's excellent. So if you want to pick them up, be sure to use that coupon code. Yep, so we got the Circuit Player Express, like I was saying, the 60 LED uh, per meter yeah. with the alligator clips on there. So they just, just hook up to the pads on the Circuit Player Express. Then we're going to need a little bit of an extension on there. Mm. So we have the short alligator clip wires, and these are super handy for connecting a large variety of electronics. And of course, our three uh, AAA battery will power the entire yeah. thing. So it's safe and easy to obtain. Batteries are everywhere. Yep. Jump into the circuit diagram. You can see how the, this is put together. Very easy. Just clipping those on and plugging the battery in. And then I just show a little note here on which way the uh, the uh, you know, pixels are uh, connected with the extensions, mm, okay. little alligator clips. So you can see how you can clip those on and then fold or push the silicone little rubber things closer to uh, so they won't make contact with mm, each other. There you go. You them push off. them together. Cool. So Jump nice. over to the code. Very easy. You can edit this in your Google Chrome web browser, or you can just download the UF2 for this, and it'll run you through um, what you're going to need to set this up. You can also see a breakdown, if you scroll a little bit, on which what each block does. So you can sit there and look at what happens when it starts up, uh, all the things that are set up, like setting your accelerometer to like a mid setting, so it doesn't trigger when you just you know look at it. Uh, have it create the NeoPixel strip on what pad, how many, the colors, the brightness, and then over to you, your interaction things like when will it trigger? Does it? Um, what sound does it play? What do this? What does the NeoPixel strip do? What does the NeoPixels on the Circuit Playground Express do? What colors? Um, and then how to reset all those animations to go back to where you started. You can cool. go through those. 
a nice little breakdown on, of each block. And you can edit these. When you click on the edit with make code, it'll jump you into that exact uh, block layout. So you can move those around, change the order of things, you know, change the sound, the colors, or anything like that. Yeah, and it's also cool if you do not have the hardware, you could also play with the simulator that's on the side. Nice simulator. Right side left side. Yeah. Very cool. Excellent. Been over to the assembly. Very cool way to do this construction. I printed out a template, which you can get down there. All the files are available for that. Uh, Cartoon Network sent these over. So you can cut these out with just a pair of scissors, hobby knife, or the vinyl cutter that we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And then transfer those drawings over to the foam core. I think it's like a 0.5 millimeter um, thick uh, foam. I think they call it poster foam board. Okay. So we're gonna cut the outline out of that. And a clever thing here is that we're gonna use the, the center part that we cut out as our lids and our backing for that. And then the sides are gonna be used as the framing where the NeoPixel uh, strip will live inside of. So if we scroll down, you see we're just hot gluing the two layers together and the bottom backing for that. And then uh, letting those dry. Okay. You know, the shape like that, we're actually offsetting these. So if we jump over to the overhead, yeah. you can see they're not completely flat, pushed up against it. It is actually stacked on top of each other. And that's a very good way to uh, have like a, like a depth. You could actually go in there and cut these at a 45 degree angle to mm. bevel these out. The lid here is removable. So you can maintenance your uh, NeoPixel strip. And this provides yeah, obviously yeah, just press fits in. You can still swing this around and it's not going to fall apart. Excellent. Cool. Back over yeah. to installing the NeoPixel strip inside of your blade. Uh, just you adding some cutaways for that and then laying out our strip inside there. The diffusion on this uh, looks really good when you do it in white. Um, mm -hmm. Scrolling down over to Build assembling handle. the handle. It's just a paper handle roll tube. And then for the Circuit Playground Express, we're using chipboard, the 0.7 millimeter thick chipboard. You could probably just use like a, like cereal a cereal box. box. Yeah. And uh, tube, so yeah. it fits around the diameter. Yeah, you're gonna roll it around your Circuit Playground Express so you can get the size for that. And then we're gonna cut it down so we can insert that. That's shown in the picture there. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Cerebrum Express and the battery pack actually just uh, uh, get joined together with just some uh, what is it, foam tape. Mm. Hold that in place. And then they all just snap fit or press fit into the handle and into the little pommel there that we constructed. Cool. If you scroll down, uh, we're just adding like little foot stoppers so the Circuit Playground oh. Express doesn't fall through to the other side. Mm -hmm. So nice little, little scrap pieces. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, actually, that's just glue. Oh, that, there you go. And That's then great. the construction of that, you can uh, read that in more detail. We're just adding shims to hold the blade in place. Yeah. And then uh, using hot, er, not hot glue, uh, glue stick to add all of our decals on there. Mm. I'll show how, the little breakdown of how to assemble your pommel. Super easy. It's just pieces fitting over each other. Yeah. Create that little detail there. And then the gem that is at the end of the pommel, you can see here it's just uh, these cutouts from the foam board and just assembled together to form that cool little shape down at the bottom. There you go. Super easy to put together. It should take about two hours from start cutting all of this. Uh, this is a, a really cool way to do cosplay uh, props in terms of prototyping. This would have taken forever to print. Uh, on yeah. a printer, just the design just alone, just, yeah, just getting this, it. you know, design. I know that people have modeled this, but uh, our goal here was to have something that students, you know, could make without having to wait for a printer or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. Cardboard paper, you could definitely build this out of just a thinner paper with all the templates that are available. So super cool. Check it out. Awesome. You can use the same techniques to build another uh, prop. Yeah, so any, uh, sort, any type of uh, exactly, yeah. Um, so show we're gonna be doing a lot more. Yeah, the yeah. next one up for this, we did put a poll, I think, in our last video. Everybody wanted. Hey, look, Rose's shield. So that'll be coming up next. 
uh, week. Yeah. Exact, say, exact same type of construction for that, just a little bit more. Uh, Goes well with the sword. Yeah, a little bit more circles for this one. Mm -hmm. So a couple more techniques that we'll talk about next week. Assembling <laughs> this cool too much fun shield. <laughs> about to hit me with it. Yeah, this is the uh, artwork uh, provided from sorry, Cartoon Network. Uh, that's what the shield looks like. It's different colors, different shapes, and sort of stuff. So just mm -hmm. going to share a little bit there. Cool. We'll talk about that next week. And we're going to check out uh, Microsoft Make Code for uh, building your own animations for this. And of course, Cartoon Network, big thanks for them uh, promoting, you know, kids learning about making really cool props, code, animation, design, all that cool crafty stuff kids yeah, need. There's uh, more awesome projects in the works. John Park's working on one and Whole teams, uh, yeah. Yeah, Aaron St. Blaine is actually just about wrapping up another one that we'll yeah, probably cool. release either today or tomorrow. Yeah, I'm glancing over at people talking about Valentine's projects. That's exactly what That's Aaron exactly just what released, yeah. a Valentine's project. Let's definitely great. check that out, and I think it went live. Uh, not yet. I think it's still under review. This feels great. It's got weight to it. It's oh, like, my God, yeah. It's, like, it's got, like... Really Did I even turn build. this on yet to show it off? Really good build. Of course, there's LEDs in there. You can kind of see it. Yeah. I'm super happy with how really clean great. the construction for this uh, is. Yeah, well, I mean, you haven't so really I'll show it off le uh, next week. It's, it's kind of fun to go from 3D printing to... Oh, it's this, a high uh, opener. It's an eye you opener. You can do this so much faster. It's like, what have I been doing the whole time? <laughs> it's like, I know. I really like that. This is all, you can take this, you can disassemble this whole thing too. Yeah. So the, the this um, slots out. This all slots out, hit, all these press hit come out. So you can go in there, do maintenance on it or travel with it and mm. whatnot. It's super clean. I really like this foam construction stuff. Excellent. There you go. I have to change the show to Crafty Hangouts. <laughs> <laughs> Crafty hangouts. Yeah, so after the shield, I think I'm gonna do probably the whip. Um, I don't know, we'll put another we'll see, yeah. um, poll on what you guys think would be cool. Excellent. The topaz stuff, helmet, I don't know. So many cool glowy things in that series that we can make. Sweet, well, that's what we're prototyping. That'll be uh, probably next week's project, the shield. And we're coming out with some more cool fun stuff. Jumping on over to uh, Shop Talk. You got a hot glue gun that we should really quickly say. Oh, do I you guys ever do? No, I never talk. I don't know. I don't have any footage for it, but yeah, yeah all we that. We gotta do hot glue gun. We can't stop loving it. <laughs> this is a cordless, battery-powered hot glue gun. It is 125 watt, so it's really, really good. Um, there are quite a few of them on the market. I actually got. Uh, got you got turned Amazon. on this from, yeah, from hearing Donald, uh, Donald Bell, who runs a Maker Project Lab. You should subscribe to that YouTube channel. Yeah, a lot of tool tips. Uh, he did recommend one. It was from Rayobi. Yeah. I was like, well, if Rayobi makes one, probably Black & Decker has one, because I already have a bunch of Black & Decker batteries. So the goal is find whatever battery you have, if you already have a power tool, and then find a manufacturer that uses the same battery for mm -hmm. a hot glue one. This saves you so much time. You don't have this cord. It, does, it doesn't take you know, to get five angles minutes. To... that I could never get with right. a cord. So like... you, yeah. The <laughs> thing that he said that. was like, you bring the, the thing to your work instead of bring your work to the glue gun. Exactly, yeah. yeah so it's a nice one. I am surprised how fast it heats up. Yeah, it's got this nice <laughs> And it doesn't sit there here. and droop everywhere. Yeah, it just feels like a, like a power drill, but it's a hot glue gun. Mm -hmm. This is those bigger one and a half inch sticks. Yeah. So if you are looking to up your glue, your hot I glue game. I threw away all of our corded good. glue guns because it's like, they're you not do good. not spark any joy in me anymore. <laughs> So it sparks all sorts of joy. Excellent. And it has a removable battery. We have like two of these already. Yeah. This is our lawn blower. This is our power drill, right? Isn't it? Something like that. There's a couple tools that exactly. use it. Yeah, yeah, a couple different tools use it. So that's a little tip. Try to find um, use for your batteries. Mm -hmm. Don't, because you're going to Yeah, go with, with the like, system you already have. You end up with like six different battery manufacturers. Yeah, pay $30 you know, instead of paying 150 Yeah to get like the whole thing. Also, one last tip, you could actually 3D print an adapter if you really, oh, really- Oh yeah, that's right. You've got a lot of time on your hands and you want to model something, you can, you can do that. I saw yeah. somebody did a Ryobi to Black & Decker, or maybe it was the reverse, Black & Decker to Ryobi, something like that. It was also on, on Maker Project Yeah, e e every manufacturer makes one for the battery system. Yeah, definitely so check it out. You're definitely gonna need it for all of this, uh, like a classroom or something. 
We're doing all these constructions that are just like the promo video that they show, mm -hmm. like the handyman's going around the house fixing everything that's broken. <laughs> yeah. That was a black so and decorative, by the way. So lots of really good uses for that. Yeah. Oh wow, everybody likes the glue gun. I told you, man. Like, what? I didn't know about that. I didn't either. I thought Me. I knew my glue guns, but turns out there's these beast glue guns. Remember Ben Heck was making like an awesome glue gun? Automatic that's like, that's feeder. Kind of what it, yeah, yeah something kind of mentioned. Feels like. Just a good glue gun that doesn't suck. Yeah. Oh, well, not let's say that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Coupon code retro wing. <laughs> if you guys pick up anything in the shop, get the. Uh, is that uh, Amazon? Somebody. All right. Make um, sure I need a signature. Let me. Let me. Catch up. Wave bye to them. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Let's All right, let's see. see. Jumping over to this week's community makes. makes. We're in community makes suite. So every so. Tuesday we time time lapse a uh, a three D a three D print from the community. This is a D twenty dice. Die is it dice or die? I think it's D twenty die. Twenty dice is like labeled more of them, more than one. It's a a braille dice. So it has uh, the braille um, symbols imprinted on this, on the, on each face so you can see what number it is. It's pretty cool. Braille D20 dice by Indigo Delwig on uh, Thingiverse. Printed yeah. this on the Prusa on this nice uh, blue PLA from Filamentum, I believe. It's got uh, infused glitter and that sort of stuff. It's a nice, um, nice model. It's on Thingiverse. Here it is, if you want to pick it up. Try it out. Uh, it's a D20. Very cool. Also has some makes to it. Very cool. Also uploaded this geodesic lampshade um, earlier this week. Um, we basically took the ball drop project and I wanted to make it into a lampshade. So I used the Ultimaker 3 to do extrude um, this frame that kind of resembles a geodesic dome and it's uh, printed in two colors. The inner core is a translucent PLA and the outer is a galaxy black vertigo from filamentum. I created this fun um, lampshade. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> this is a lampshade. So it's on Thinkiverse. I thought I'd throw it up there. There's not much to it. Um, I have two different sizes of it and uh, some useful tips on printing it. But other than that, that's about it. It's a nice little lampshade. This week in um, Community Makes, we have some fun makes. These are some folks that put some, some projects of ours. This is the Pi TFT Raspberry Pi 3B case. So it's a remix of the, of the, of the Pi case, the Touch Pi that we made. And uh, it now fits the Raspberry Pi 3. Next one is the Gmail box. This is an Adafruit IoT project. It, uh, it uses a little micro servo to, uh, to turn a flag on this little 3D printed mailbox. So whenever you get a piece of mail from your, from your mailbox, your Gmail box, uh, this thing will let you know. So it's just a couple of parts that's not fit together. There is also a little add-on stand here to make it look more like Ooh. a stand. So also green. Yeah, it looks great. Um, and uh, it, it's Internet of Things, right? So there you go, Internet of Things mailbox for your desktop. Very fun one. The Flexi Raptor is a dual extruded print that uh, we remixed and uploaded and uh, folks are having fun printing it. So it's a print in place hinge as well. These little hinges, that, uh, it's a little flexible and it's a dual extruded, so it prints it in two colors here. I think it's so fun. Yeah, it's fun. This is the uh, energy sword from the video game series Halo. And uh, we made the energy sword. It's a 3D printed uh, prop with Ooh. some electronics here, some LEDs and things. So check it out. It has a lot of makes, and uh, it's really, really fun light sword. You know, a nice little description it's of huge. his build. So thank you for sharing that. If you'd like to share your projects with us, you can do so by uploading them or tagging us on any of the social channels. I'm at Ekin and Pages at VideoPixel. There's some at handles up there. Let me see if I have anything else that I may have missed. Just going through the comments. Oh, it's a really good idea. John is saying that now we need a Braille deck of cards. Hmm. Yes. I think we can do that. 
jump over to the Discord. Troy Gar just saved thirty dollars using the discount code. Sweet. Awesome. Excellent. Oh, nice and Dave there. just got his Halloween in. He's gonna print out the mat case. Nice. Let me Such know how that goes. I, fun I'd like toy. to see uh, <laughs> how how that geometry works out. Did we mention somebody asked if we could turn that into a necklace? And you definitely can. The oh, front yeah, face right. can yeah, uh, press fit right onto the uh, yeah, the Halloween. Yeah. That's a good point, actually. So and let's get say we wanted to make this uh, wearable. Well, all you got to do is pop out the face plate. Now you'll need to. I mean, you could out. you could foam stick these yeah, two components on there. I guess stick that there yeah. to one of the headers. That and or the use speaker. the that what's that battery that that fits in between the headers? Is uh, it a 300? 400. I think it's 400. Something like that. And uh, you need to access it anyway, so I guess something like that. It's a little chunky. That's why I didn't do it, but it would fit like that. Yeah. Not bad. And yeah, where would the speaker go, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why I didn't make it a wearable, but. There are okay. ways to do it. Yeah. And then, of course, you have these two um, available. Lanyard holes. Yeah, they're available. So you could just put a slip ring in there or clip right onto it. So, yeah, you could totally make it a wearable. Just print out this one faceplate. There you Good go. Idea. Yeah. Oh, funny note. Then see that little, I don't have one on me, but yeah, an SD card fits <laughs> perfectly in there. So one of the ideas was to make an SD card with a little bit of copper tape so that when you insert mm. the SD card, it would... It would trigger Who the... Who had that idea? Was it I did. No, okay. That was my idea. But I, I, I had time to do it, but sometimes you don't have time to document it, right? Because mm -hmm. sure, thing. you have time to do it, but do you have time a day, two days, to actually thoroughly Reshoot document something everything? Reshoot where it doesn't make I sense, know. you know? So, and you want to keep it as simple as possible. You know? <laughs> it, yeah. There you go. Uh, I've had my share of complex and crazy builds that uh, don't ever get built because they're too complex and too crazy. There you go. It looks so great. In the, in the, the proportions are, are pretty spot on. I just brought in uh, whatever tech drawing I found on Google and then just uh, traced over it and then scaled it up so that it would fit the screen. So yeah, the screen is a little bit small, but it is 128 by 128. What are you going to do? Yeah. I, have a, an, uh, I have a dock, an Apple Watch dock that's actually this exact same shape. And uh, it's actually smaller, and the screen's bigger. It's kind of funny. It is. <laughs> it's hilarious, yeah. yeah. Do we have a little bit of time? Um, retro, mini retro computers are fun to remake. Uh, was it last year or the year before? We made the Commodore PET with a, with a M0 and the uh, Charlie Plex Matrix, which kind of has a similar vibe to it. Looks like we got to make a same. shelf that is nothing yeah. but little... Fake keyboard. But uh, if you folks missed this one, it's on the Adafruit Learn system. Just type in PET, and it'll show right up. This was a collab project with Phil B. He wrote the code for this. And it just runs a couple so of uh, kind of like fake matrix code or whatever. Mm, it's like you're in the command line. Yeah. This is a Charlie Plexed matrix. I forget how many LEDs are in it, but it's, um, it's a nice amount. And a uh, 3D print and snap fit case. The Adafruit M0 is in there with a battery as well, slide switch. This is a little bit more complicated to build because there are lots of wires and things. Um, here's the pop out there. There are some external wires and things. So there's the, the feather board. And uh, what else do we have? Oh yeah, the, the matrix is right here. Here's that Charlie Plex to matrix. I love this thing. This, this matrix is awesome. Mm -hmm. Now it's playing uh, kind of the matrix code where it yeah. falls in. But you do need wires, you do need solder. It is going to take longer to build. So that's why I was super happy that the the Halloween project is so simple compared yeah. to it. No need to solder all these wires and things. Yep, you can focus complexities into the design. Into the software too. Oh yeah, the software too. Software's great. So Python, this one's Arduino. Oh, lots of people still have their old computers. John saying he has his original IBM PC 5150. So cool. Serial 352, whoa. Huh. <laughs> I hope. First week of production, wow. That's awesome. Oh, I forgot to put my initials inside here. Oh, well. <laughs> You're supposed to put your initials in there. That's yes. this week's show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't, don't leave yet. Tonight, we're going to do show and tell with everyone else. So if you'd like to share your project with us and the world and Lamar and Phil, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Happens every Wednesday right here on the YouTube channel, Facebook as well. Um, yeah, just Twitch. hang out. In the, I think it's other places. Yeah. Periscope. That's right. And then tomorrow is John Park's workshop 
It's at 4 p.m. He's going to build. Um, boom, boom. He's going to build some cool stuff. He already tweeted what he's going to build. Yeah. yeah awesome. So you already know. It's on the blog. Sweet stuff's coming up. He's also right. got the, in addition to Make Code Minute, there is now Make Code Arcade oh, Minute. Oh, debuted like build yesterday. Build their own games. I think a lot of people were already going in there and modifying it. Building their own games can be so fun. I think we have more than one or two guides already on using Make Code yes. to make a game. Mm -hmm. So, so check it out. Skim by those, and if you're interested, definitely I forgot, tonight is dig also, more. Ask, uh, Ask Engineer is also tonight at 8 p.m., right after Show and Tell. I kind of skipped that one. So it's Show and Tell and then Ask Engineer tonight. 7.30 p.m. for Show and Tell, 8 p.m. for uh, Ask Engineer. Uh, let's find out what's uh, going to be new tonight. I don't know. Ooh. New products, new things. Let's Circuit see. Python on Hardware Weekly will also be there. A little sneak peek. Mm -hmm. So John Parks Workshop tomorrow. Looks like we've got those compute it. modules going in. Mm -hmm. The uh, Pi 3 compute modules. Sign up. Yep. Thank you guys so much for supporting this adventure called Aya Fruit. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate your orders. Every little order counts. Um, that's how we keep this thing going. So we can work on all these weird, crazy weird cool fun, projects. Crazy products, yeah. projects, and puppet shows, and crazy things. Well, we thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you later tonight, and we'll leave you with a uh, one of these things. Oh yeah, so I was trying out some new settings for the Prusa here. That's why it's moving. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> it caught it's... itself though. It did. did yeah, it that's one really? of the. It, it's definitely because I'm doing the time lapse, having the uh, the print head park. And I don't think I had a large enough retraction, a vertical retraction. I just slammed into the little pillar there, but mm. you can see that it almost painted. It, but that would probably be the uh, one of the hardest things to print. Uh, yeah. You did print this without that little pillar in the center. There's That's just right. a, bit, a little bit of the sagging. It's supposed to help. Yeah, with the overhang. It's kind of like your built-in support structure because mm -hmm. it minimizes the bridging. But if it's only as good as, I guess Z hop. I don't know. All right, well, that's going to be it. We'll see you guys, see you guys next, next week. week. Don't forget to make a great day. See you guys.